Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to His and Hers Trauma Podcast. Um, <laughs> we've had some technical difficulties. I literally do all things internet tech design for like a living and I am really struggling to figure out WordPress. I'm not happy about this but I skipped all of those classes in college because I didn't like WordPress. <laughs> so I I've been um let's just say I've been sort of like going insane trying to figure out a domain and I'm coming to the conclusion that I'm just going to have to you know kind of bite the bucket or whatever, you know take it on the chin, and uh, I'm just going to have to use a platform, like, website situation. Like, I do website design for, like, money, and, um, yeah. (laughs) This whole, like, thing is a lot different. I actually have quite a bit of experience with podcasting, um with the individual that is going to be of subject today, who is my ex. Um, He and his best friend um, did a podcast that, you know, was just mainly for fun, I think, for them. And, um, but I, I was the one that set it all up and got it all figured out. But it didn't, you know coincide with what I'm talking about so resources and show notes and information for people to well for you guys to like access um regarding topics we're talking about links and um you know just information that you can dig into and have to help you navigate whatever stage you're in or if you are just curious about what I'm talking about um that wasn't really necessary because it was more of an entertainment podcast this is more of an informative um structured kind of podcast um so I'm dealing with a whole new monster because I want it to look really good so uh, I don't know when this episode is going to go up to be honest I just kind of feel like I should start telling my story a little bit. Um, I, you know, touched on my intentions with this podcast, which are to, you know, help everyone out and be there and, you know, have someone that you can relate to and also my husband and his story. And um, I found his episode to be much more illuminating as to like what was going on behind the scenes and I've been doing a little digging and listening to some other podcasts that deal with um you know just basically like abuse abuse in relationships um of all all kinds and um I'm actually pretty shocked at how in depth some people go and of course this is going to be as anonymous as possible um but I feel comfortable sharing my story and um, I think it's important so everybody knows what I went through and that um, it might not be what you went through, but that I'm definitely um, someone that went through a lot, Um, like a lot. (laughs) And unfortunately, so did my child and um, I still have days where I'm really angry. So, um, I was inspired by Russ over at Traumatized Podcast, and I love that podcast. If you are needing a perspective from someone who has complex post traumatic stress disorder, um, he is awesome, and he also has ADHD like me. So, I find him very relatable and I think it's really important to throw that out there that there is, um, you know, 
a man out there talking about his experiences, being very vulnerable. And I really just find him to be inspiring and that um, he, he recently told his story. So you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. Um, this is going to be part one of I don't know how many parts. <laughs> um, I'm, I think it's important to be thorough um, because of the layers of abuse are very, you know, we don't talk about them. And um, I'm going to be including in this, in the show notes, um, a link to the domestic violence, just sort of, you know, network. And it has a checklist on there. And um, the checklist is well, let's just say when I first saw the checklist, I was really disturbed. Um, I'd always, you know, kind of thought, oh, domestic abuse is, you know, the extreme. I mean, I know I was definitely being abused and um, that my ex is a narcissist. Um, He's actually a self-proclaimed narcissist. And I also think he's kind of a psychopath. Um, he exudes all of the, um, criteria that narcissists, um, tend to display in their lives and he can hide it all he wants to, but I lived with a man for six years and you can't hide when you're under the same roof. So, um, Russ just did, um, well, I don't know if he just did, but he did a really great, um, episode on what a narcissist is. And, um, I will be, dang it. What is going on here? Sorry. I will be, um, sharing that in the notes. And also I'm still like working on an editing software. So these are like really raw (laughs) and really kind of just like, um, off the cuff recordings. So not a lot of editing going on. Trust me, like we're going to, we're going to get there, but we just want to start talking about it now. Um, and not wait because I think it's important to be able to talk about it while it's still sort of fresh. Um, it's been about a year. Well, it's been, it's been a year, uh, basically since things for me fell apart. Um, (laughs) physically, so to speak, mentally, and like the relationship fell apart a long, long time ago. And um, I'll talk about that later. But what I want to start with is, you know, the beginning, right? Like part one of my experience with this person who changed everything for me. Um, Not in a good way, but I also am very aware that I had to go through that relationship to get to where I am right now. Um, I learned a lot from it. I learned what I don't want in a relationship. I learned that I need a partner and I need friends and family that have healthy boundaries, that respect my boundaries, and that, you know, it's okay to be myself um, because I really lost myself. Um, And, uh, it gets pretty dark. So buckle up. Um, I don't know how dark this one will be because this is just sort of laying the foundation as to why this happens. Um, why you get so attached so fast, why you get wrapped up in this love, right? And, um, it's because It's because they're really good at what they do. Um, So a narcissist is who I was dealing with. Um, I do believe that my husband was also dealing with a narcissist, but it sort of manifested itself a little more slowly than mine did. Um... I believe that I was met. (laughs) I met and I met a narcissist the night that I met him. Um, And 
here's kind of just how this all went down. So, um, a little backstory. I was married and I have a child and I had, you know, been separated from my ex-husband for a while, but it was, it was hard, but you know, it, we were making things work for our kid and, um, I was not happy in that relationship. And so I was really vulnerable. Um, I wasn't happy because he was bad to me. He was never bad to me. My ex-husband was never bad to me. He never mistreated me. Um, if anything, you know, I have to take the credit for being the butthole in that situation. Honestly, we got married really young and we were really good friends, but there just wasn't a lot of spark and it it just went on longer than it should have. But, you know, we have a beautiful child together. We have good memories together. We are good co-parents. We're good, right? So that's also something I'll touch on too. <laughs> it's like red flags when someone only has terrible, terrible things to say about all of their exes. Um, and because that just is not the way life goes. Um, we've all been there, done that, right? We've been in relationships that just don't work. Um, no harm, no foul, right? Sometimes it stings, but it's not worthy of carrying around the energy. Um, and that's kind of where I was at when I met my ex. Um, I was feeling quite, um, you know, confident in my decision and things were going okay. You know, I was able to support myself and I didn't need anyone. And I was, you know, really just kind of having fun, living my life. Right. And I, I'm a mom, so I can only have so much fun, but I was dipping my feet into the dating pool, my toes or whatever, into the dating pool, so to speak. So this was in like the end of 2016. Um, and it was like in the fall and, um, I had, I'm I'm just going to tell you how I met this person and, that it was sort of bizarre from the beginning. Um, I had been sort of dating around, nothing serious, and I was um, in the process of getting this, you know, half sleeve tattoo done on me and everything and kind of embracing my like freedom or whatever. And I agreed to go on a blind date with someone. Um, And the guy that I was going on a blind date with showed up at the tattoo shop and I just sort of knew it wasn't going to be like a great date, but I agreed to, you know, hang out with him. I'd paid for a babysitter and I thought, you know, Hey, let's just see what, you know, what this guy's about. Really nice guy. (laughs) Um, just, you know, it wasn't all right. The good fit, but we ended up going to dinner and then we walked down the street to a bar that I'd never been to um to just have a drink and you know talk and hang out uh it was pretty clear that you know it wasn't going to be going anywhere and we just but we were still having a good like conversation I would say so we sit down and um I I don't know maybe 15 minutes into my cocktail um, I accidentally bumped someone's elbow because these bar stools in this place were really close together. And I looked up and he looked down at me and I said, I'm sorry, excuse me. And he just smiled at me and I was like, oh, okay. Hmm. This is a very attractive young man. I thought he was much younger than he was. Um, and I just, you know, thought that was it. Um, And that wasn't it. He hijacked my date. (laughs) He started to become the center of attention. He started talking to me. He started being very flirtatious with me. Um, It was very obvious that he wanted my attention and only my attention. 
and that he would do or say anything and have no, you know, awareness that I'm there with someone else. Didn't care at all. And um, the conversation kind of lasted for maybe like, I don't know, 30 minutes. And my date was like, uh, let's, let's go. Let's, let's roll. And I had to get home anyway. And I was like, okay. And I looked back over my shoulder at this person and he was staring at me and smiling as I was walking out the door. And I felt very strange because he was like, kind of like making fun of me, but in like this very weird flirtatious way. And it was a really cold fall night in November And I turned to my date and I was like, was that weird? And he was like, I cannot fucking believe that guy. That was the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. He's like, I cannot believe how disrespectful he was. Like, I'm here with you. I'm paying for your drinks. And this dude just swoops in and like runs the show. Like I, he was really pissed. Um, And so I knew that, you know, something was off and I I felt bad and I just said you know I had a really nice time tonight like get home safe we'll touch base later and I sat in my car and I sat there for like 10 minutes and I'm like why do I want to go give this guy my number this stranger my number why do I want and I'm like this is not no 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 I'm leaving so I um I drove home And that was that, or at least I thought, right? I just thought I'd had this weird encounter with this person. Sorry, my my dryer is going off. Like I said, this is really rough um, stuff um, edit-wise. But I'll get get better (laughs) once I get the website up. So anyway, moving along. A couple nights later, my... I was still married, but we were separated. My husband and I decided to go out and hang out for a while because you know we were still friends and we you know we're still hanging out um even though we knew things were kind of ending um and I was like hey let's go to this place like it's really cool and I think you would like it so I just kind of went back because it was somewhere new I never thought I would ever see this person again I thought he was just sitting by himself having a drink maybe after class or something like that because he looked to be in college and, um, you know, he was really tall, but was, had a really boyish look about him. And so I, no, I, I got, we got really dressed up or like, let's just go out and have fun. So I got like my super duper, like, you know, fun, like party clothes on and we went out and we had some drinks and this was back when I was drinking. I don't drink anymore. Um, so, <laughs> Um, I walk in to this place and I look up and I see this person again and he's not sitting at the bar. He is standing behind the bar dressed in a very, you know, swanky, nice dapper outfit and he's tending bar (laughs) and I'm like oh what the hell is going on um so quickly I realized that this was his um workplace um and there was this weird like pull I just remember like gravity or like something just like pulled me I I like walked right over to him And I looked at him and I said, do you remember me? And he said, maybe. And I was like, no, you remember me. And he was like, sure. Yeah, I remember you. And I said, give me your phone. And I put my number in it. And um, I hung out for a little while. And my ex-husband got kind of pissed off (laughs) and was just not in, like, the mood to, like, socialize. And so he left. And a couple of my friends met up with me and we stayed kind of late and, um, we talked, I talked to this person, um, he was working. So, you know, it was sort of like intermittent conversation. Um, I felt very uncomfortable with how attracted to him that I was. Um, 
I had been in a marriage that did suffer in the intimacy department and I was sort of coming back into my own and I had been going to the gym. I'd lost, you know, 80 pounds um, after I had my child. Like I was looking and feeling really good about myself. Um, I was, you know, doing good. Um, I was confident. Let's just say that. But I was like, why am I still here at this place by myself with this stranger? So um, I left with my friend and he texted me and he said, if you want to hang out, we're all going out to like Waffle House or something. And I I was like, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go home. And he was like, you're a jerk or something. But like, when can I see you? And I was just like, I guess when you're free. So we had our first date like two days later and I remember the date very well. Um, But what stuck out to me was that he was very (laughs) open about the fact that he was good at dates and um, he had to be in control of the whole thing. And at the time I was like, cool, this is kind of refreshing. Like I... I'm kind of alpha type A. Um, I've usually been, you know, pretty self-sufficient, independent in relationships. And I crave that feminine feeling. Like I really kind of, you know, I'll be a little graphic here. Like I kind of like, like a daddy type, you know? And, um, I was thinking maybe this person can handle me because I'm kind of, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm stubborn. But, um, I'm just, you know, very matter of fact about stuff and I like things done a certain way. (laughs) So, um, anyway, I kind of ramble a little bit. I'm sorry. I'll get better at that. We're all going to get better at this. So anyway, um, the first date was really good. Like we kissed, we did all the stuff people do on really good first dates. We didn't you know, go home together or anything, but it was a very good date. And I felt very, um, swept off my feet, I guess is the way to explain it in a way that I'd never felt before. It's like, he said all the right things. He's, I could see him studying what I was saying. Um, I could see him just sort of like analyzing me and sizing me up and seeing all of the you know, potential that I had to benefit him. Um, and it was a bizarre feeling, you know, it was really weird to be feeling so like, oh my gosh, you know, that was like an amazing night. Um, I was 33 at the time, you know, I wasn't like a young, young lady, I've been there, done that. And I, you know, was getting out of a marriage and I was sort of not anticipating that feeling. So, um, we started hanging out and we went on a couple more dates and just, you know, there was always alcohol involved. Um, and that's, I'm going to just go ahead and throw it out there that this man is an alcoholic and, um, alcohol was a big factor in the abuse that took place in our relationship and I wasn't much of a drinker because I was you know really like I was just really focused on my fitness and being a mom like I would you know cut loose and have fun but I wasn't a daily drinker I wasn't a binge drinker I didn't drink to you know blacking out often um except for you know in very dark times in my life um I think you know all of us have coped with things in different ways. So I was not really, you know, drinking a lot until I started hanging out with him. And, um, but you know, he still, we weren't being like intimate with each other. And so I thought, well, okay, maybe he just doesn't like me. And, um, he seemed aloof, but like when I was not reciprocating his attention, he became very, persistent. Um, and I just didn't really like that. And I went on a couple dates with him, like I said, and we had fun and it was like, you know, it was kind of like a 
dream. Like I was really falling for this guy. He was saying all the right things, doing all the right things. Um, you know, I thought he had his life together and I was like, wow, this is cool. But I was, I was scared because it didn't feel right. There was something, there was something off. It, it, I could, couldn't, you know, really explain it. So, um, there was a couple days where we had planned to go on another date and I didn't hear from him. And so I was like, you know what? I think this is where I'm going to call it. And I, I ended up blocking him. Um, I was like, I didn't sleep with the guy. Um, we went on maybe three or four dates and he never came to my house. He never met my kid. You know, it was just very like fun, casual dating. But I, I had a feeling that like I wasn't prepared because I was very upset when I felt ignored. Um, when we were supposed to have plans to go out and it's really difficult when you're a parent and you need structure to just sort of be like, Hey, I can get a babysitter in 10 minutes. Like it doesn't work that way. So, um, I blocked him and a lot of my friends were like really happy because they had met him and they didn't like him. (laughs) They were like, he is so full of himself, Chelsea. And he is so obnoxious. And I, you know, I saw that part too, but I saw the other parts and you know, it was a combination of things. I I can't really explain what I liked about this person. Um, he wasn't the most attractive guy on the planet. He was, you know, average. He was tall. I guess he's, he's tall. He has that going for him. Um, but he's very smart. Um, and he's very well-spoken and he's very witty and he is really good at like captivating your brain um, manipulating your brain, (laughs) really. So, um, yeah, so I blocked him. Um, and you know, like six weeks went by, uh, cause it was like January, um, cause it was around my birthday and I just, I don't know if I was bored or what, but I was like, well, you know, nothing's really going that great for me. And my ex had moved out. So I felt like it was okay for me to be dating. Like I wasn't crossing any boundaries. Um, I was getting, you know, I was, I felt alone for so many years, which will be the common theme here. Um, I felt alone in this relationship as well that I was pretty, you know, ready for something. And I had, I had told him that and he really latched onto that. So I knew that I had maybe told him too much about myself, but I unblocked his number and literally that night I got a text from him and I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And it was a really, you know, romantic, kind of like cryptic, like we could have been something great, you know, what happened, but like in the way that he would phrase it, which was sort of like, I don't know, he just reminded me of like an old Hollywood film sort of, um, before I got to know who he was, he exuded confidence and intelligence and, um, just like well-groomed, well-spoken, all this stuff. Like I thought he was a sexy guy. And so, you know, this text he sent me like really got to me and, um, He's like, we need to have a, a second first date. And I said, okay. And we met at the same place we had our first date. First, first date. <laughs> um, and it went really well. You know, um, it went as well as a date probably ever has in my life. Um, it was probably the best date of my life. And I will admit that. Um, so I was right back in it. We just fell right back in it. And... It went really quick from there. Um, Things started moving quick. So I was feeling good about everything. Um, We weren't living together. We were, you know, spending a lot of time together and really having a good time together. Um, You know, I did notice that he partied a lot, but like 
I was kind of like in that phase too, a little bit. So I was okay. But, you know, we weren't spending every night together. So I didn't realize how much of a problem it was. Um, And, you know, as someone who works in the bar industry, I just thought it kind of was like what he did at work. (laughs) Honestly, Um, I didn't know it was like, uh, like a necessity. Okay. So he, um, he really pursued me hard, like really hard. Like I would, I know that he, he saw something in me that he really wanted. Um, and I remember him telling me the thing I love about you the most is that you don't need me. And I thought to myself, like, am I not supposed to need someone? And I was a bit you know, startled by that. But I was like, yeah, I I guess I don't need you. I want you, but I don't need you, you know. Um, (laughs) You know, fast forward, it became where he needed me, even though I guarantee you, he will deny that. But, um, oh, it's so weird talking about this, you know, guys, it's really hard because it's like going down memory lane that I don't think about very often. And, um, I'm just, I I just want to get this out there because I'm, I don't want to talk about it again. (laughs) Um, it's, you know, I'm still traumatized by this whole thing at times. So anyway, um, things went quick and we decided, Hey, like let's live together, but like, let's wait till like the summer. Cause it was, you know, February, March by this time. Um, and he took me out to lunch and he was like, what do you think about me being like your, you know, special roommate? Um, like the, like first of May, I was just like, May, Hmm." like we had talked about July, you know, July at the earliest. And it really threw me off and I felt a lot of pressure. Um, you know, he's like, I just want to be with you. And like, I have to drive. I live in a town that's like 20 minutes, 30 minutes away from where he lived. So it was, I I understood, you know, and he didn't get off work till like three in the morning. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I I get it. But I I kind of was just like, oh no, like, I don't know. And, um, you know, I was like, okay, okay. And I don't know why I said, okay, I shouldn't have done that. Like I said, I was, I was really gobsmacked by this person. So, um, he moved in, in May of 2017 and, um, things were good for like a couple weeks. <laughs> um, actually, no, that's not even true. When he moved in, he, he really made things difficult. Um, he, he made it very hard to enjoy being at home. Um, I know the transition was difficult for him, but it was never acknowledged that it was also difficult for me and that I was sacrificing a lot and I was putting a lot on the line. You know, I had a three-year-old at the time and I was, really swept up with this guy and I'm like okay we're gonna try this out and I in hindsight I should have not done that um but I was hypnotized like it's crazy these people these narcissists they are it is like their full-time job they're like they have like PhDs in getting you to do whatever they want you to do whatever they want you to do um so shortly after he moved in he got fired for being hammered at work and making a mistake. So I was like left with, oh, fuck. Great. Now I have a whole nother person to take care of. Um, I don't, you know, get maintenance from my ex. I just get child support. And I was looking at this as like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and he was just drinking constantly. And I was like, this is getting a little, a little scary. Um, so that was kind of tough and I'm going to wrap this up kind of leaving with a cliffhanger because the one thing that I never felt before I found out what I found out is I never felt like he was talking to anyone else. 
he he was the one that said it's just me and you he was the one that had that first exclusive talk you know we're exclusive um he really pushed that and so I was being exclusive um and we um before he moved in we're gonna go back like a month we went um to Arizona on like a romantic getaway to meet his sister and um his stepdad and just you know get away for like a weekend and his grandmother unfortunately passed away like the night before we were gonna leave and I remember saying like we can reschedule this trip and he's like no it's fine and he went out with his friends and as far as I knew, he was just out having drinks and hanging out with his friends. Um, I showed up to pick him up in the morning and we went to the airport and I was more in love than I could imagine getting on that plane. We had a great trip. Everything was awesome. Um, I think it really pushed him to want to live with me. Um, and everyone was impressed with me. I think that was also, um, very important to him. I think they were like, wow, this girl's really, you know, got it together. And I think he, um, really found that to be important. (laughs) Didn't realize that like life falls apart sometimes. So we came back and, you know, we moved in together and he got ended up getting another job at another bar. And he um he left his phone at home he forgot his phone when he went to work and this was like like two weeks after he moved in maybe two three weeks it was pretty quick this turnaround thing maybe maybe a month maybe a month maybe it it was a month and um you know I was feeling a little weird about something I I didn't know what it was and I'm like yeah I'm gonna look through his phone (laughs) Um, I did, I I snooped. Okay. And there's, because I felt like something was off and I found something. Um, I found that the night before we had gone on that trip to Arizona, he cheated on me. Um, I'm not even going to say what he did because he doesn't consider it cheating. Um, it was cheating and it set the entire tone for our relationship. Really it did. Um, I should have thrown him out. And I even talked to the girl that this happened with because I knew her and she had no clue that we were as serious as we are and, or we were, excuse me, that we were at the time. Um, he acted like he was single and I was really pissed. And, um, I've been dealing with this drinking and this losing job and, you know, it was just like my life just got flipped upside down immediately. And I don't think he acknowledged that at all because he just couldn't see outside of himself that he was actually, you know, impacting my life in not a good way. Um, And I reached out to his brother and his friend and, you know, they're like, we all think he needs therapy and all this and that. And I started to get concerned and I was just like, oh, fuck, like I am fucked because where I live, you have to evict someone if they move in with you. Um. (laughs) you know and I was like shit he lives here now fuck I'm screwed um and that's where I'll leave it for now um because what happens next is gonna be a condensed five years episode um it's just gonna be I'm gonna focus on the behaviors the patterns um the ways in which he stole my identity and left me as a shell of myself and when I had nothing left to offer him he discarded me very fast like I've never seen someone leave so fast and leave everything behind in their lives so I know it's not the first time he's done this like I said guys he's a pro so that's the first episode of my story um it gets pretty intense um I'm not going to, you know, be too specific on things, but I'm going to definitely get the point across that like shit hit the fan. So, um, you can look in the show notes below and I will be linking that, um, checklist for 
um, what to look for if you think you might be involved with a narcissist. There's many different kinds of narcissists. Um, and also I'm going to be linking the um, domestic violence um, criteria website and you will be shocked because a lot of the stuff that's on there, if you're with someone like I was with, he said it was just normal relationship stuff and it wasn't. Okay. It, it wasn't normal. So anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking around. And, um, I hope maybe just me being a little more transparent about, I'm going to share what happened to me and then we're going to move on. We're going to move forward. Um, we're going to move on and talk about where you go when you realize that you have lived through this or you are living through this. And, um, I also would really love if you guys would reach out and contact me if you would like to talk about your story and share your story. Um, I don't think that there is enough, you know, support out there and we are a village (laughs) of survivors. So I'm sending a ton of love to everyone and I hope everyone is safe and sound and has um, you know, something positive going on in their day today. With that, I will let you go and I will come back with part two whenever I have some time and I figure out this website stuff. (laughs) Wish me luck. Okay. All right, guys, take care and thanks for tuning in.